Snare design is a complex art form and it takes a critical ear to become good at it. It's an area that I've struggled with for many years, but recently I've made my mission to improve on it. One helpful resource was Metric's breakdown of hackers on computer music. So shouts out to him for sharing the knowledge. By the way, my name is Stranger. If you want to improve your music production and sound design, especially with dance music and drum and bass, then this channel is for you. In today's video, I'm going to simplify the process so that beginners and intermediate users can get into to snare design. And make sure you hit the like button if you want to see me make more videos like these. And also hit the subscribe and bell icon so you can stay informed on future videos. And hey, follow me on Instagram and TikTok where I'm providing additional exclusive content. All right, without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, so here's snare design beginner level. The practice here is to learn how to replace a snare's fundamental frequency. The reason why we want to do this is you may have a track written in a specific key and you want to get your snare to match that key for more unity. So the first step is to find a snare that you like. So I have this big sounding snare here. Now you can pitch the snare up accordingly if you like. I'm just gonna pitch it by one semitone. And then we're gonna use an EQ and then shave off that fundamental tone using a high pass. So around there. So you keep only that high end for character. The next step is to build the fundamental tone underneath that snare. So you're gonna find your synthesizer of choice. I have serum here. We wanna play a sine wave for that fundamental tone. Now the important step here is to play that fundamental tone on a key that matches your track, if that's what you desire. Usually anything between the first and second octave will work. For lower, more boxy snares, then you'll want to use lower keys. For a more tighter snare, you might want to move it to the second octave. Now going back into Serum, you want to shape that sine wave a little. The first step is to increase the attack to make room for that initial snare top to hit. So usually anywhere from five to 30 milliseconds work, depending on that top snare tone. So you're gonna have to use your ear. That sounds good to me. Then bring the sustain all the way down and then adjust the decay accordingly. If you want a really tight snare, then shorter decay, a bigger snare, a longer decay. So anywhere from 30 to 200 milliseconds will work. I'm gonna go for around 80 milliseconds. Now you can increase the hold. Essentially that's the sustain and the longer the hold, the more boxier your snare will sound. So that sounds good to me. The next step is then to adjust the level, the fundamental tone. Essentially you're mixing those two signals. Find the optimal tone where it's not too loud as tucked underneath that high end character of the snare. And then you may want to go back into that top end and shape it a little more. So I'm finding the tail of the snare a bit long so we can truncate it a little. And then add a fade out. Now, if you're using classic mode, then you can use the decay and sustain levels, but I just like the visual look of the one shot mode. And then once you're happy, then bust the two channels together, and then you can use a glue compressor, which gels the two sounds together and adjust the threshold. So you're getting around anywhere from one to four dB of gain reduction. So use this meter to gauge how much you need and then the attack, usually you want to have a bit of a slower attack for, to allow a bit of that initial attack of the snare to hit. So anywhere from 10 to 30 milliseconds works. And typically you want a short release. So this is how the snare currently looks like. Then the next step is to add a clipper to smack that signal. 
So what we want to do is increase the gain significantly. Now bring the output down so you're level matched. And you may want to have either a hard clip or a more softer clip. I'm going to go for a hard clip for that smack brick wall sound, which is common with a lot of drum and bass snares. So this is pretty much our snare. So let's hear it in context over a beat so you can hear how it sounds. All right, so that's sounding good. All right, so here's snare design intermediate level. And in this level, we're gonna break down the snare into three layers. We have the rim shot, which is the initial attack of that drumstick hitting the snare. Then we have the fundamental tone, which is that frequency that the snare resonates at. And then we have the tail, which provides the overall character of our snare. Now I have this project file here to help you guys create the snare. So if you want this, you can grab it down in the link below all for free. Now I've provided these guides here to help you understand where certain sounds should start and end. So the marker here for 30 milliseconds, generally that's where the initial attack should end. And then I have a marker here for 250 milliseconds, which indicates the general length of a snare. Now it could be shorter or a bit longer, but generally that's the maximum length. Now the shorter the length, the more tighter the snare, the longer the length and more fatter and bigger the snare. So you can have a length shorter than 250. You can have it up to 150 milliseconds, for example. But this line just shows you generally the maximum length your snare should be. So for the rim shot, we're going to find a sample of a rim shot that we like. So I have this rim shot here. You want something that's nice and tight, kind of has a wooden sound to it. Then I'm applying a high pass EQ to remove the bottom frequencies. We just want the top end for that initial click or attack. And then we're going to adjust the length of this rim shot. So bring the end of the sample all the way to this 30 millisecond mark. Now adjust to taste, obviously, and then add a fade to it. So you have a nice clean attack. This sounds good. And then the next step is we're going to add the fundamental tone. So this time I'm using operator. The neat thing about operator is you can set the general frequency and we're currently it's set to 220 Hertz, which equates to the key of a. Now, if you need a table or calculator to convert your frequencies to a note, check the link below. I have a helpful tool for you guys. Now, once again, if you want a tighter snare, then you want a higher note, for example, Usually tighter snares are around 600 or 700 hertz. But we'll just stick with the 220 for now. And then bring the sustain all the way down. And then adjust the attack to make room for that rim shot. So since our rim shot is 30 milliseconds, you want to adjust this accordingly. It could be more or less, just use your ear. I'm setting it to 30 milliseconds and then adjust the decay of the fundamental tone. Again, around anywhere from 30 to 250 milliseconds will work. You will have to base it on your taste and your liking and the type of snare you want. Now I want a tighter snare, so I'm aiming for around 130 milliseconds. And then you may want to adjust the level of this fundamental tone. It could be louder or quieter, depending on your taste. Now, if you're a little more visual, I've also provided an audio sample of the sine wave for the fundamental tone. Now, remember, you do have to use a sine wave that is, I guess, a given. Now, if you're using the audio, then make sure you mute operator. And this is a more visual way to do it so you can see uh, where the attack it should be so around here to make room for that rim shot and then adjust the length of this tone. It's up to you if you want to use the MIDI or the audio. You may want to adjust the slope with this point here. I'm going to stick with the audio for now. 
And then finally, we're going to work on the tail. Now, I'm going to break the tail down into three parts, actually. I have the main tail, which is some noise recorded with some reverb. And then we're going to layer a clap and an acoustic snare for body. But let's just focus on the noise tail for now. Once again, this is some noise recorded with some reverb. Again, make some room with some attack. And then shorten the length accordingly. Depending on the snare. So if you want a bigger snare, then the tail tends to be longer. I like it nice and short for a tight snare. And then I have just a bit of an EQing on this tail, just to bring out some of those high mids. Now let's hear it with the fundamental tone and the rim shot. Now I think the tail could be louder, so let's increase the gain a bit. Again, the tail provides character to the snare, so you want to adjust to taste. That's sounding more like a snare now. Okay, now let's add the clap on top. So this is an imported clap sample. Now we want to adjust the clap and bring it down. We really just want to provide some undertone. So bring the gain down significantly. Once again, adjust the attack. Now you may find that attack of each of the tones may be slightly different. But that's fine, as long as we're making room for that rim shot. And again, let's add a fade to that clap. So that's sounding more uniform now. These, the goal is to adjust the length of each sound so it sounds more uniform. Before, it sounded disjointed because that clap played it too long. But if we increase this fade out, now it sounds more uniform. And then you may want to adjust the slope for the intensity of that fade out. And once you have the shape, then it's actually easier to fine tune the gain here. You may find that you need more or less gain. That's sounding good, so about negative 17, just for some added body. I forgot to mention that with the clap, I'm applying a pretty heavy EQ to remove the bottoms and some of the low mids as well as some of the high frequencies. And then I'm boosting the high mids here. So here's the clap without the EQ. And here it is with. So I'm only keeping that mid frequency area to add some character to my overall snare. And then I layer an acoustic snare for the finishing touch. Again, for some added body. So here's the acoustic snare. Once again, we're going to have to adjust the attack. Adjust the decay. And then adjust the overall gain. All right, that's sounding pretty good. It's sounding like a uniform snare. And once again, I'm using an EQ to high pass the snare, so I'm only keeping the mids and highs of this acoustic snare. So I got this acoustic snare from Addictive Drums. However, you can find any acoustic snare either from a breakbeat or from another drum kit. As long as it sounds acoustic, that's what you want for that character. And then once you have all the layers sounding good, then group the layers together. Now this project file is already grouped. And once again, we have a glue compressor for around one to about four or five dB of gain reduction. Now I do have a slower attack at 30 milliseconds to allow that attack to hit before it compresses. And once again, we have a clipper to really smash that snare to make it really whack. Now adjust the gain of the clip accordingly, depending on how much of a brick wall sound you want. And 
I like that aggressive, hard sound. So I'm actually all the way at negative, I mean, positive 18 dB. And you may want to adjust the overall output down so it's not clipping. And I go for a hard shape. Now, once you have applied that glue compressor and free clip, you may find that you will need to adjust some of the layers. Since some of those harmonics have been brought up by the compressor and clipper, you can now hear certain elements come out a little more and you may want to adjust for that. For example, this clap, I think could be shaped a little better. That sounded better. Now, once you're happy with the snare, then you can export it as an audio sample and then you can use it for your future tracks. Now I like to export the snare and then open it up in an audio editor to examine the snare. So look at the beauty of the snare. It has a nice shape to it. You can tell it smacks by the look of it. And it's ready to be used in a track. So let's hear the snare in action. So here's a jump up track I started. Sounds pretty fat to me. All right, so I hope this helped you understand the basic principles of snare design. For beginners, learn how to layer an existing snare with a fundamental tone. And then for intermediate users, break down your snare into three layers, the initial attack, the fundamental tone, and then the tail. I know it is a complex process, but if you practice enough, you'll get it. By the way, if you want to support me, you can grab a number of my products. You can pick up my Gnarly Serum preset pack. Also, I have a number of Ableton project files to help you jumpstart your next idea. But if you're not ready yet, then pick up my free Serum preset pack and my free sample pack. All right, that's pretty much it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. Keep practicing, and I'll see you at the next video.